This is my $200 Dimebag Hanjo, and it needs some serious upgrades. I wonder how much money we can throw at this thing to make it awesome. Let's find out. First off, one of my biggest complaints and reasons for this change is that the original brakes work, but they could be way better. All right, so let's start breaking down this bike and getting it ready for some new parts. Hey, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button. It's gonna help spread this video to everybody. And I would appreciate that. I'm going to be happy that this square bottom bracket is gone. This thing weighs a ton. I'm actually planning on reusing this bar tape, so I'll have to be really careful to not damage it while I take it off. Next up, it's time to remove these old grifters. Time to get rid of these old Textro mechanical brakes. Their lack of power was a big reason for me wanting to make this change. Getting rid of a front derailleur is always super satisfying. Can you guess why? Off with the old bars and on with the new PNW Coast handlebars in super wide 520 millimeter width. Connecting those bars is the PNW Coast stem in 90 millimeters. The stem's actually really cool and actually has a GoPro mount built onto the front of it. Since that square taper bottom bracket is gone, we can install this SRAM dub bottom bracket. Any ideas on which drivetrain I've went for yet? Put your guesses down in the comments below. What would you do differently? Would you go with these parts or is there something else that you would have suggested? Let me know down in the comments below. For cranks, I went with the SRAM Rival 1x, which has a 40 tooth chain ring. This is my first time actually doing something like this on a drop bar bike, but so far, everything's been pretty easy. For a derailleur, I went with the SRAM Explorer Axis. That's right, I'm upgrading this budget bike to SRAM 12 speed axis wireless shifting. And honestly, the reason I went wireless has more to do with the cost. For whatever reason, going with SRAM Rival Axis was actually cheaper than some of the actual mechanical alternatives. For wheels, I went with the Hunt 4 Season Gravel Disc X Wide wheel set. This wheel set is a super great deal and is kind of a no brainer for a wheel upgrade. They have a claimed weight of about 1700 grams and have an internal width of 25 millimeters. These aren't the lightest wheels around, but they are 348 grams lighter than my stock wheel set. These wheels are center lock only, which would normally be a problem, but they actually have these six bolt adapters that are super easy to use. And these are probably overkill, but I'm gonna be rocking 160 millimeter SRAM center line rotors front and back. Since I'm on a one by system, I'm going to need a big range cassette for rear. And that's why I went with the SRAM Explorer 10 to 44 tooth cassette. That's not terribly far off from the 10 to 50 that I run on my mountain bike. On the brakes and shifter combo, I'm going to be rocking the SRAM ETAF Axis. This is a really cool system that has a shifter button on each side. One goes up and one goes down. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And since these are wireless shifters, I only need to worry about routing the hydraulic brake cables. Well, this is where everything goes terribly wrong. Remember how I said that I hadn't worked on gravel or road bikes before? Well, higher end drop bar bikes use a different brake mount standard, and that is not what I'm used to. So these brakes are flat mount, which means that they are not going to work on this bike without an adapter. Do they even make an adapter? Well, after a ton of internet research and even considering looking at different options and returning this whole setup, I came across a company in Canada called AS Solutions. AS Solutions. I don't think that was on purpose. 
At the time, they were the only company to make adapters that converted flat mount brakes to post mount. I ordered up a pair and crossed my fingers and hoping that they would work. And to my surprise, they work perfectly. Well, let's step back and have a look at this new and improved version of this bike. Well, there you have it. This bike has gone from budget to rad. The total cost of this upgrade wasn't cheap, but it did make this bike awesome. So in total, I actually spent this much right here. And here is a full breakdown of every part and the cost. I'm not sure what the original weight of the bike was, but now it comes in at, I guess the last thing to upgrade is the frame. If you want to see another rad video, check out this playlist right here where I take a GT hardtail from bland to awesome.